Davin Cardenas, the lead organizer of the North Bay Organizing Project here in Sonoma County. Uh, we were talking a little earlier about uh, how you came up here from Orange County. What was it about this area that attracted you? How did you end up here? Uh, I came to actually study in yeah. 1999, and I was attracted to Sonoma State. They had a very um, unique liberal studies program, and I had a professor at uh, Professor uh, Francisco Vasquez at the at Sonoma State University. Who were you part of the Hutchins program? Yeah, the Hutchins yeah, program. Yeah, so yeah. I was recruited into that, and it, it made sense for me that that type of education, where it's kind of do it yourself, uh, a broad base of literature. And ideas and um, you make what you want out of it and that really fit, fit my style of, of learning. Yeah, I'm with uh, you. I, that's one of my regrets that I didn't actually take the Hutchins uh -huh, program. Uh -huh, really, yeah. uh, some friends of mine did. It's awesome. Yeah. What was like what in that program? What were you pursuing personally? What were you looking? Um, I think uh, identity. I yeah. think just trying to find out who I was or who I wanted to be. Um, I think I had vague political ideas of what what the world was or what I wanted it to be. And I think being exposed to a wide uh, variety of literature and ideas helped me begin formulating my weird ideas into words, into thoughts, into uh, yeah. uh, you know uh, something that could be presentable. So and, did you go from weird ideas to a weird guy? I mean, like yeah, when, absolutely, <laughs> no, but, but absolutely. No, when you found your identity, when, do you feel like you've you found that or what? Oh, uh, I think it's a constant process. I think it's yeah. a constant uh, stage of growth that we're always in. At least myself, I'm constantly in. I think I'm trying to define that better. But um, having a, an identity, a political identity definitely helps that because I feel stronger in who I am or who yeah. I want to become. And uh, so, yeah, not, not only did Hutchins help me, but there was also a lot of student activism at Sonoma State. I was part of a group called Mecha on campus, a Chicano student organization mm -hmm. that really also helped me um, have a vehicle for those same ideas, right? Because right. sometimes we have ideas, sometimes we have words, but unless we have a vehicle by which to actually live them out in, they just become ideas and words. And so, so your your political consciousness is really shaped in that environment in Cinema State. Definitely, yeah. What, what era era are we in? Like this in is 2000? 99, 2000, okay. 2001. Um, around that time. Kind of a when, crazy era, too, really, you know, yeah. in terms of what was happening in the world. And stuff. Right, right, yeah. right, exactly. I mean, uh, 99, I think, was the WTO mm -hmm. uh, protest out in Seattle. And then, of course, we were on the heels of 9-11, and right. that leads into to the Iraq, the second Iraq war, right? And so, yeah, there was a lot of... Um, Activism. I don't know that it's died out so much, but uh, but I think you know it was a it was a ripe time to be politically active and to yeah. find out um, to find the people around me too. You know, and we all wanted to find and do something better for ourselves and for our community. And so we had a, a really a vibrant group of, of students at that time trying to yeah. do it. Well, in terms of like how your political consciousness was shaped, I mean, could you? I mean, it's impossible, I think, to self-define in thirty seconds or less. But how would you describe that uh, in in? Um, I, I, I believe in a, in a true democracy, right, where yeah. people are actually engaged, uh, thinking about their neighbor, thinking about themselves and how they uh, participate, uh, become active and have services for all, right? I believe in the commons. I believe that people have the ability and the right to have the resources necessary to thrive, to be healthy, to raise beautiful families. And, uh, and I think there should be a structure that can also facilitate that process, uh, but it also takes a lot of our own responsibility in making that happen and, uh, and not only securing our, our, our own well-being, but actually really caring deeply about our neighbors and the people around us and not just our immediate neighbors, but right. you know, uh, all over the country on and, and on, on a global level, yeah. really having an interest uh, in, in thinking about like a, a globalized community where we're, we're you know, United. Is this one of these interviews where uh, 20 years from now they're going to source it uh, for background because you're running for president? I mean, no, no, I, I doubt that. I doubt that, but, um, you know. But, you, I mean, you do have that sort of political spark to you. And yeah. are you thinking about office eventually? or? It's, it's, I, I, I want a democracy to be from below, right? I want right. to make sure that I'm engaged at, at, at a level where people are living and in, and in their neighborhoods and in their schools and in their churches and those spaces that they inhabit where their values actually have a place to come out. And I want to be in those circles. Where their lives are actually lived. Right, yeah. absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit of what you've done in, in some of these neighborhoods, uh -huh. uh, especially with the NBOP. Yes. Uh, you, you've been very active in, in terms of organizing uh, local labor. You know, yeah. And uh, often that's labor that may be undocumented or mm -hmm. that's labor that heretofore, until you guys got involved, didn't have a place to congregate or a safe place to sort of uh, learn how to interact with right. possible employers and that kind of thing. Right. Walk us through that process. So I, I, after school, I began working at the Great and Day Labor Center, right. and uh, and there had been a group of dedicated volunteers out there for many years, engaging workers, building trust, doing English classes, 
and workers who were really stepping up and saying we could do something better here as day laborers. Yeah. And so uh, they had they had also been conscious enough to organize a budget while they right. were engaging work, workers, which is also, also important. And uh, when I finished school, they were able to hire me as the first uh, uh, organizer out That's there. Great. So I spent seven years of my life in downtown Grayton. Wow. Uh, Three, four years on a street corner, three years in the actual center, and uh, and we built up a process of worker participation, uh, negotiating wages, workshops, political workshops, uh, health and safety workshops, and um, and and a consciousness that it, it actually we can raise wages, we can raise living standards if workers are united and willing to actually be part of this process. I mean, and that's some serious dedication too. Seven years, I and mean, you must have learned a lot of the stories that brought these guys there. And can, can you kind of tell us what a day laborer is and and, and their in their experience in Graydon. Yeah, so I think I think day laborers have uh, been a historical uh, phenomenon. Is you know they, they you could read about day laborers in the Bible, right? I yeah. mean, there's references all over. But in Sonoma County, in particular, uh, in the areas of Fulton, Grayton, and Healdsburg, um, for Sonoma, yeah, for, for decades, yeah. decades, there's been workers, yeah. uh, in, especially in Grayton. Um, after uh, you saw the phenomenon of NAFTA, uh, the United States, Mexico, and Canada, this free trade agreement that really pushed workers off their land. And, and so you had an influx of immigrants into the country after in the, after the mid 90s after this free trade agreement was passed that coincides with the you know gentrification of great in itself which was right. old working class town totally now new changed. owners yeah. totally changed yeah. so now you have this this uh clash of cultures almost to an extent right it's it's wine country now right yeah. right and the workers were like whoa that what just happened right and uh and but there was uh, enough consciousness amongst local residents to say, well, we can do something for 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 the community, for ourselves, for the workers. And so they started building the process. So so day laborers are men who wait for work on the side of the road, uh, men and women. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and often that becomes a, a a a fight for who can you know outbid the the lowest bidder in right. terms of trying to get the job and and all that stuff. So. Uh, we wanted to kind of make a process where people can negotiate, bring their wages up, uh, offer everybody a chance to work, help uh, classes, English classes, all that stuff. But really leverage the strength in numbers. Absolutely. Yeah, that as a body, to working together, that's all we have. They can negotiate better on their right, own. Right. That's all we have. We don't. Yeah. We don't have the. You know, we often don't have the money or the resources to make the political change we need to happen. We have people and we have to organize people and be disciplined and consistent about that idea. And I think the day labor population being organized was a perfect example of what can happen when, when, when people come together. I'm with you. So uh, uh, let, let's come back to this after our mm -hmm. break. We're with uh, Davin Cardenas. He's the lead organizer with the North Bay Organizing Project. And uh, we'll continue this conversation. So. Sure. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. With Davin Cardenas, uh, continuing our continuing our conversation, Davin, of course, is the uh, lead organizer of the North Bay Organizing Project, uh, which we will be coming to in a second. But let's let's kind of pick up where we left off mm -hmm. uh, about the community in Grayton and creating this integration uh, and awareness of uh, what happens with day laborers there and the surrounding community and yeah. how and how you guys were able to make that work better yeah, for everyone. Yeah. So there was also, you know, a, a, like I said, there was a group of volunteers building trust amongst the workers, reaching out to neighborhoods. There was a degree of nimbyism also. You had new businesses, new homeowners. There's million-dollar homes right, out there. Not my backyard. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So uh, so they also underwent, you know, the great community, uh, and, and I, I give credit to the people who were, you know, against the process as well. They come up with a year-long consensus process that include about 50 stakeholders, people for, people against, local government, sheriff, uh, every business owners, wow. and they walk through a year-long uh, consensus process 
um, and came out with agreements about, okay, now how are we going to move forward and what's the accountability model for this? So that's really, uh, after that point, we were able to actually begin really the, the deeper organizing process, had accountability from ourselves, from the neighborhood, right. from the community. And so, um, you know, it was, it was heated, right? It wasn't so imagine. simple, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but people were at least willing to engage in it and come out to common solutions. And I think everyone's benefited and it's, it's, a, it's, it's a concrete example of, of what can happen when people start talking. And you, of course, developed a skill set and, uh, and connectivity and uh, in a profile such that uh, you got involved with, uh, uh, you're one of the founders of the North Bay Organizing Project. Yeah, there was a table of labor and, and faith-based groups uh, coming together and we were brought into it. I was brought into it. My coworker was brought into it. And, uh, and the idea was that in the tiny town of Grayton and our tiny little day labor center, we, it's, we didn't have the power needed to actually change the policies that were still affecting our membership. Right. And so this idea that if we link with other groups where people are already organized, share a set of values, we have more power. It's all a question right. of relative power. Who has it or who doesn't have it? And that comes in the form of people. Right. Of people, case. absolutely. Right. Because people will turn into money, too. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. right. Yeah. I mean, we always say that... Uh, in, in, in the public world, you have to organize people and you have to organize money. You have to think about doing both if you're going to have an effect on, on the social circumstances. Yeah. So, um, so, so, yeah, it made a lot of sense for us to actually group together with these other institutions and try to figure out what common gra ground we had. Well, and, what's uh, that process like? I mean, I, as somebody who works in a nonprofit, uh -huh. uh, in, in my case, uh, I find sometimes nonprofits are very, uh, our sister nonprofits are often very covetous of their resources, what they've mm -hmm. got, mm -hmm. and they're worried that we're looking to lean on them or, or I'm worried sometimes they're looking to lean on us for mm -hmm. various resources. Yeah. How, how did you create those partnerships and open that dialogue without scaring anyone away? Yeah, I think there's a, there was a network already of, of faith and union groups uh, that had historically been maybe working together, maybe collaborating here and there, doing actions, doing events together. And this was uh, the call to actually turn those relationships into something concrete. Right. Let's put resources on the table. Let's make sure we understand we have common goals a common community we want to create. Let's let's put our money on the table. Let's pull our resources and, and let's do it, or let's stop talking. Right. So we're we're affiliated to a national organization that does a lot of training, the Gamaliel Network, uh, and they do a lot of trainings. and And I think part of it is that is like, what what's your stake in the game, and are you willing to be serious about it, or are you just going to verbalize it and talk about it, and philosophize about it? Right, which is a very Sonoma County phenomenon. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and and uh, you know, I always say that if this were a philosophical movement, we'd already be kings and queens. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's not. We actually have to put our ideas into practice, and that takes a lot of uh, um, intentionality. Mm -hmm. And so I think the people uh, were ab at least willing to do that, willing to say that, pool their resources, and hire an organizer, uh, and then and then start building. So right. and then part of my job, my work is actually to keep building and expanding. You know, take whatever resource you have and make it more. Essentially, right. is, is part of the job. You used a turn of phrase earlier that I thought was interesting. Uh, the idea of creating the community you want rather than taking the community you've already got. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of, uh, uh, of a resource in itself, the existing community, how far are we from the vision that you guys have, right, as an organization for Sonoma County? Um, I mean, we're not so bad off to begin with, right? I mean, we're not like this evil empire. No, <laughs> right? no, no, but there's there's plenty of work to yeah. do, you know, and, I, and and it can be done. That's the whole thing is the, the, the victories that we've had in Sonoma County, the, the producing change in the material conditions of people's lives that we've actually been able to partake in is for me a demonstration of that this is not a futile battle, that, right. that things are never stagnant or they're always subject to change. It's a matter of who's willing to step into that realm and change it. And we have beautiful people around us who care enough to give up big segments of their life to actually make that happen. Yeah. And, uh, and that's based on their love, on their values, on their faith, whatever it might be. But they're actually willing to engage beyond the cerebral into what's physical yeah. and, and make the, you know, meet with whoever needs to be met with, do the actions, do you know whatever, organize large scale meetings of 800 people, whatever it might be that creates the necessary democratic pressure to actually change conditions. And, and so I'm like, you, you are obviously quite adept at going from the idea to the execution mm -hmm. and creating all the linkages in between to make stuff actually manifest and, yeah. and to make things real in this world. Um, what frustrations do you, do you meet with? I mean, besides the sort of the Sonoma County philosophy issue, <laughs> you know, where, yeah. where people get a little dreamy or they get argumentative and they want to talk something to death, but they don't actually want to do anything. How, how do you personally motivate people to, 
actually get their hands dirty. Yeah, I, I don't know that I can motivate people. I, I think we ask a lot of questions. We are mm-hmm. we ask why a lot. You know, we have why, why? And, and force and, them to interrogate right, themselves. Right, right. Yeah. And, and so we, we, um, we consider this the idea of... Uh, uh, of asking people's self-interest, like what do you want? What do you see? What do you, what's your vision for the world? Does it coincide with mine? If we're both clear about what we seek in this world, then let's actually have the courage to do something together. Because I can't convince anybody to go do an action or work on an issue. Uh, and if I did, it would only last for so long. What we have to build are structures and relationships that are ongoing, long-term, and have a broader vision for what's to come. Uh, and okay, so, so what, what is to come? What's next? Well, shoot, <laughs> man. I mean, if we don't start working really hard, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're facing a, a, a crash course with our, uh, our natural resources. Mm-hmm. So we have to actually start thinking about what's sustainable, how we're actually going to be preparing for almost this inevitable collapse of natural resources. Well, we've, we've got no water, mm-hmm. at least for a while. Right. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, with uh, the climate's changing every day and we're having to become adept to that. Our agricultural um, industry is going to change, I think, is yeah, a result absolutely. of that. Yeah. But also there's a lot of hope I, I see with, uh, the, with the growing Latino population. Uh, I, we're gonna, we are a political force. We're going to be a larger political force, not only in Sonoma County, but in the state of California. And uh, the question is, what kind of political force? Right. And so for me, it's really a question of how do we position ourselves as leaders, as young leaders, as old leaders, to actually begin influencing Latino political thought so that we're, we're thinking about the commons, about how we're going to raise our families in healthy and beautiful environments, how we're going to look out for our neighbors, uh, and not just be the same mediocre political class that might currently exist mm-hmm. how are we going to be different and, and I have a lot of hope riding on California so yeah and it's yeah. evidently a lot of passion too well you know? I mean yeah. I think it, there's reason to be um, you know cautiously optimistic right. but I think it, it's gonna take work you know all, all, all great ideas devolve into hard work you know indeed and you're good at making the hard work actually occur so well, we're I'm talking with Davin Cardin- Cardenas uh, he's the lead organizer of the North Bay organizing uh, or organizing project, project. Right. <laughs> we'll be right back after this break yes. <laughs> a Goodwill ayudan a financiar programas de entrenamiento para nuevos empleos en tu comunidad. Eso significa que tus cosas son más poderosas de lo que crees. Dona cosas, crea trabajos. And we're back with Davin Cardenas. He's the lead organizer of the North Bay Organizing uh, <laughs> Project. Yes, yes. Clearly, I have a speech impediment. I cannot say organizational organizing, <laughs> right. but uh, but you're doing great work there. And uh, we were uh, I, I, during the break, of course, I was goading you about your political ambitions. Of course, you you've consistently uh, you know made me kind of realize that maybe that's not where you're at right now. But I'm going to ask you again: Are you thinking of office eventually? I think democracy is best made from below, and yeah. uh, and it's such a frustrating process because we work in politics. You know, we we, we deal with the, the the political institutions and. Honestly, democracy wasn't made for the poor, right? This this is a, it's a democracy run by money, and so we have to deal with that reality. We don't just shun it, yeah. right? We engage with it fully, but um, I'm convinced, you know, and I have a, a, a I'm restless and naive about the fact that we can actually change it if we're good at, at, at building democracy from below. That we can actually build enough sufficient political pressure to actually influence. Uh, well, you're going to in- influence another politician. You're you're going to organize be. a body politic. Be. I'd be no good for it anyway. So. But I, I, I was going to say I, I got a suitcase of money right here. I was going to give you if you. Like, <laughs> sure. ah, we'll do that later. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, well, you know, besides uh, your, your activism and your organizing and stuff, I know that you also uh, this may be born out of your Hutchins experience. You have a broader base uh, of, of interests uh, that go to the arts, and you're a poet. Um, I 
do I used to write? I used to be a creative individual. I, I don't write. You used to be. You probably I don't. Did. I don't do enough of it now. But uh, yeah. yeah, I I have. I think I have creative juices inside of me. They don't uh, always get to come out, and uh, sometimes they do. But uh, yeah. but yeah, they. Uh, do you do you feel like you had to make a choice in your career, like to go one way or the other? No, I think it's just your. You know, my career consumes me, and. Um, and I often realize that I'm neglecting that side. And I think actually, if I pulled more of of, of what's uh, artistic and cultural and you know into what I do, I'd be a lot better at what I do. I just have to be more intentional about it. Yeah, it'd be great if you ran an arts arts organization. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and then you grew up in in Orange County. Uh, uh, big family, little family. Um, a family of five. I have two a brother and a sister and two parents. Middle uh, child. Y- um, the youngest. No shit. Yeah. No shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, are, are, are they all ambitious like you? Like y'all, are they're they... all great people. Yeah, you know, my brother yeah. and sister are both, um, you know, very good at what they do. My brother's into the environmental world. My sister's a teacher, and they're both really incredible at what they do. My parents are both, you know, warm, wonderful people. I was gonna say, what, what is it? What was it about your upbringing that made your entire? You know, well, I think we were raised in Orange County, and like, so we, you know, we'd often go to Mexico in the summer. My parents, my mom's from Mexico, my dad's from Texas. We'd spend a lot of summers in Mexico, and then we'd be brought back into this world in Orange County where we were kind of weird and strange and yeah. a little out of place. And I think um, we had to develop identities in the midst of that. And so I think. Um, you either jump fully into it and assimilate and try to fit in to the best of your ability or you start kind of developing an alternative identity. And so I think yeah. I was the youngest, so I was almost following the lead of my brother and my sister right. as they were going through that process. And I was like, oh, they're kind of cool, you know, and I, I, <laughs> yeah. if I could be like them, I think I'd be all right. And um, so, you know, I think we started developing those identities from that and, circumstance. And, and in terms of your identity in Sonoma County, like when you, you came up here, you went, you went to school here and all that, and you obviously found like your perfect a lot of professional ambitions mm-hmm. get realized here. Did you have to change yourself to pursue this? I mean, did you, I mean, as you matured, I mean, I know you were kind of young yeah. when you started, but yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I'm, I'm still changing myself. I'm, I'm, you know, I think this is a constant state of change. And yeah, and, and I think, um, you know, we have big political ambitions or what the world should be, but, you know, it's also, you can easily get caught in the world as you'd like it to be mm-hmm. with forgetting about the world as it is. And so I think I've learned through this process also of, of really being deeply embedded in the world as it is with a vision and a path for the world you'd like to create uh, and not getting st- completely stuck in one or the two because you're either going to be deeply depressed by stay, staying in the world as it is or you're going to be off in la la land if you're just right. stuck in the world as you'd like it to be so it's really making a, a solid bridge between what is and what should be and uh and you know carrying that is is, is part of my identity and who i want to be you know you can't know where you can go unless you know where you are or be right. where you are to know where right. you want to go right. yeah uh so what's next for you then um i think t- continuing to do what i do and trying to do it bigger and better yeah. um you know, I'm in a position with the rest of my staff who are also wonderful people in the North Bay Organizing Project. Yeah, how many, how many people uh, do you have? We're, we're two full-time, two half-time That's staff great. right yeah. now. And uh, we're getting into the realm of, of, of voter engagement and we're working on housing. You know, we're, we're leading a, a rent stabilization just cause campaign in Santa Rosa. Uh, we're, we're also leading a free student bus pass campaign. And we're starting to begin pushing for ethnic studies in the high schools as a graduation requirement. So, um, Which they have at SSU, I believe, right? Uh, well, at SSU, they have ethnic studies, but this would right. be in the high school as a graduation requirement. Right, so, which is great. Great idea. Right. Yeah, so just, yeah. I mean, broadening everyone's thought about our histories. And, right. you know, I, I can only be here uh, somewhat as a solid man because I, underst- I I have a basis for my roots and where I'm from and that that kind of broader cultural history about our history as Latino people, as Mexican people, as Chicano yeah. people. If I didn't have that, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't, I don't know where I'd be. Right. And so giving people a basis for the, not only their own history, but also learning about another person's history is critical. Yeah. It's critical to developing like well-rounded individuals. And so. history is one of your passions too, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so this gets to the heart of that, which is, yeah. and so uh, we have beautiful staff who are actually able to come up with these ideas of what we want to do, and not just come up with them, but that we're listening to what other people are talking about in their schools, or high school students, what are they saying, uh, bus riders, what are they talking about, you know, and you know, you can't escape the question about rent and housing if you're living in Santa Rosa or in Sonoma County right oh my now. God, I know. Yeah. So we don't just come up with the idea, but rather it's a process of listening, and then we try to create form to that and, and pressure based on the needs of, of the masses. 
um, instead of just what 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 the free market or what the dollar bill say. You know. Yeah, it seems like a lot of your work has to do with framing the issue itself, actually putting it into a, a, a way that we can understand it and, and communicate it. Because so many things get so abstract so quickly. Yeah, and get involved with it. Which right. I, I think is the main. Yeah. Once you know what it is, you right, can do something. Right. About it. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think that's that's kind of the key. That's the that's the secret recipe that we're all looking for. You know. And what's the secret website where we can find you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. NorthBayOP.org. Excellent. Yeah, NorthBayOP.org. North Bay this is Davin Cardenas. He's one of the lead organizers, organizers of the North Bay Organizing Project. Yes. <laughs> NorthBayOP.org. Hey, thanks a, thanks, thanks a lot. It's going to be really fascinating watching your career over the next few years. I'm sure. Thank you. So, Thank you very much. And we'll have you back. Okay, yeah. thanks. <laughs> <laughs>